Good day. Sorry about that. Technical difficulties. Alright, let's see who we've got. Guillaume, good day. Hashad, good day. Petros, good day. DF Navy, hello. Should, should we go through the comments of that previous video? It's always there's always a um there's always a a thing about, you know, not reading the YouTube comments. So many comments. I think I think I got more comments than um and likes, which was which means you get ratioed, something like that. The ratio of likes and dislikes was um was was a bit was a bit ridiculous. It was it was fun. Remember to like this video, guys. Good day, JG. Good day, Daniel. Hello. What is the EV of winding up simps over the internet? I mean, d depends depends on your definition of of simp, and and whether or not you're in a hot tub. Um, so yeah, that's the answer to your question, Daniel. Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure I could increase my, um, my simp winding up EV by turning this, turning this recording studio into a hot tub. Um, wh where are we today? Are we, are we still looking at some of this stuff, John of your, um, I think we can go over and, and reply to comments on the previous one as well. Um, comments. This is the back end of, of the comment section. We'll just go and read through some of these comments and make 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 some make some replies because I don't know people people like to reply to my to my video because it clearly ruffled some feathers. Prescott, g'day Prescott. He says this has to be the worst critique I have ever witnessed. You are attempting to critique products you know nothing about. Products you never checked out. Criticizing products you don't even know how to use. We know for a fact that Doug Pope was profitable at the high stakes. We know for, for a fact that MMA Sure Dog BTS is a winning player at the highest stakes available today. Thomas, what stakes do you beat? What stakes do you play? Okay, thanks Prescott. Um, I play 17 septillion NL on Zinger Pogo. I, I, I don't I don't know what is this a question is this just someone is critiquing my critique my my, my critiques are, are welcome to be critiqued please please critique my critiques but if you're just gonna like talk shit we can talk shit back I'm Australian it's all right we 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 talk shit for breakfast and we also eat shit for lunch so it's um and if you're wondering why i'm wearing like a jumper in australia it's like 15 degrees centigrade here which is centigrade celsius whatever whatever you want to call it um i'm sure that's like fucking like summer weather for some of you guys so especially people in canada like how do you live there that's just all right next one 3830. I'm not going to click on that. Typical nerds coming away to pronounce it. Oh, Alex. Alex Sit. G'day, Alex Sit. Typical nerds coming away to promote his own product instead of stepping on others. Maybe learn to promote your brand in a positive way. For starters, it's impossible and not practical trying to learn perfect profile. The EV difference is going to be low. Well, thank you, Alex, because I'm going to show you the EV difference is fucking enormous later in this video. Um. Typical nerd, yeah. I mean, you're 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 fucking talking about weird 
poker shit with dudes on the internet. Like, we're all fucking nerds. Get over it. My god, Alex. Like, the fact that you even, like, watched my video and then commented means that you're a nerd. We're all fucking nerds. Andy Zilla, throw some more ads. Yeah, the, the YouTube, um... YouTube algorithm likes to just fucking bombard people with ads. Good fella, you dislike the video. I know you're around here, good fella. Like, I don't know why you dislike my videos. Does it need a face cam and bad language? Well, fuck you. Um, I can use any, any fucking bad language I want to fucking use, right? This is fucking the internet, not, not, not fucking your grandma's tea party. Um... Nah, no, good, good, good fella. We, 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 we all love you. Keep, keep it up. I know you're, I know you're, you're, you're moving up in the stakes. Keep it up. But, uh, hella good work. Sure. Kevin O'Malley, what stakes do you play, Thomas? I, I, I just, I just said that. What was it? And am I, am I up to 17 septillion now? Hexacil, hex, hexadillion? I, I need to I need to I need to brush up on my um my the the naming of these large numbers because it just keeps getting bigger. Okay. And of course guys if you've got any um any 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 comments in the YouTube chat let me know. Bebla considering process deviations from Nash equilibrium strat are so big in practice, isn't it silly to pay too much attention to optimal preflop frequencies? No guy won 100k playing 100nl last year, rake back, graph, blah blah blah, blah blah blah. Someone is doing this kind of thing, winning much. I mean, y y if you want to keep playing 100nl, sure. That, I mean, that, that's, that's all I can say. That's all I can say about that. Blah, blah. I mean, if, if you're comfortable playing, if you're comfortable playing and winning at 100 now, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Um, but but some people actually want to move up. So thanks, Bebla, for that for that comment. Oh my god, this fucking essay from Rogor. Okay, I'm gonna try some constructive criticism questions. Ignore the ethicality. What ethicality? It was just fucking me responding to to random shit on the internet. It's if, if 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 that's if that's unethical, then 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 whatever. Okay. Ranges tell you to respond to any size your opponent uses, but it's not true. If you look at your ranges, how to react from the small blind to the two big blind button open. The button open range for two big blinds is only eight point six percent. No one's going to open eight point six percent. Okay. This 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 guy Rogor doesn't understand the difference between um, the number of combinations in a range and the density of the range and how the different ranges when you use multiple sizes split and you end up with different densities. By 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 the time by the time you get to the river, like you're only going to have 0 0.01 combination of each of the hands because it, 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 each of the hands plays a little bit differently. So just the fact that you, you're splitting um, early on in the tree doesn't really change anything. So it's it's all about the density, the relative density of all the hands in the range. Um, small blind response, you get eight different sizes. Yeah, you, you, you get eight different sizes, and then you look on the right the, fre the, the frequencies at which any of them are being used. Um, it's not is not that that high. So, button open to two big blinds. Look 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 at this right. You have small blind raising to ten point seven five. It happens nine point three three percent of the time, and then a little bit a little bit to a slightly smaller size, and a little bit to a slightly bigger size, and then basically nothing. Is this this is not this is not difficult. Um, all right, we'll keep going. The range is criticized as a starting point. That's why they only show single sizing. If you have to adapt, if you face a different sizing, that's what learning to play poker is all about. Not not blinding following a range chart. Yeah, I mean maybe, but how about how about the coaches just make better charts and you know give you more information? Rather than charging you a ridiculous amount of money for some shitty some shitty chart that they pooped out of their their their, their, their ear hole, like okay, um, to your comments, why would you play three border fold from exposition? Yeah, I mean the, the the fact that you don't 
that you don't have calls in all these positions means that you're just going to lose a whole bunch of EV in a lot of spots. And the, the solver isn't going to... Um, it, it, because because you've removed the calling the calling line, you, the solver's not going to de detect um, that particular potential for your opponents to be playing, um, and so the opening range is going to end up being wrong. So if you, if you want to construct your opening strategy, assuming other people play through a bit of fold, um, your opening strategy is just going to be fucked. Um, like it doesn't make any sense. Um, so there you go. Um, and then in terms of like playing through a bit of fold yourself, like y you should just call. Like why? What's wrong with just calling? Um, a, a lot of hands are just blo are just block catching against the open. So why do you have to turn those block catchers into a semi block yourself? Um, it's just unnecessary. You can just call and then um, play play the flop. Um, you can simplify the trade without losing significant EV. I mean, you you, you can't. And and we'll get into this. We'll, we'll get into this. We'll look at the the these. Um, using using the fucking solver, right? Because you know, it, it's uh, like a five hundred dollar solver is not that expensive for for most people who are playing at at, at the the high stakes um, in this game, right? Like you play one KNL, two KNL, like the solver, Monka solver, what? That's five hundred bucks. So it's half a buy-in. Um, and a lot of the top players aren't going to sneeze at half a buy-in. It's the same. It's the same way as like, oh, if you're playing, if you're grinding up and you're playing 100, 100 an L, and you lose fifty bucks, like, sure, it, sure, it sucks to have lost fifty big lines, but you're not really going to blink about it. And the players that are playing really high up, you know, they're playing at a very high level, so they're going to be using this this stuff. Um, Slayer Salik, I think I know who that is. I think that's um. Error or something, Hydra or something in the in the Discord. Uh, Michael said I had a coach tell me I'm supposed to buy one of these charts with you now. I don't work for that, with that coach anymore. Yeah, good on you. I mean, I don't know why. I don't know why you would any, any, pay any money for any of these the, those charts I looked at in the previous video. Um, nine says really nice video comment section. Comment section, comment section. I mean, going through the comment section. Going through the comment section is always fun. Um, do, 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 do. Okay. Mealification. Um, I, I can barely read this. No matter... No matter how many sims they solve, how many charts they see, how badly they want to emulate good player thought process, they can't raise their win win saw flop above 43 and then, and when they randomize, as I like to call it, they do it into the. I mean, this guy's probably only played like 4,000 hands of poker this year. Um, so, and, and a lot of that would have been live. So, thanks, Millification, for that comment. Um, Shining Light, hello, Samuel, hello, James Evan, hello, Nick, Fredom, Julian, hello, um, Warpix, Warpix, man, sorry you waste a lot of time, create Prism Sims infinite size for everyone, they need to add a lot of your EV, nor uh, applicable in-game, I mean, you're not trying to play exactly like the solver. You're trying to train your intuition so that you you know and you understand preflop better, and uh, you can't do that if your preflop sim only has one size at each node. Preflop. Uh, Petros is saying in the chat, Thomas, you look like a real nerd, but you have something very honest in your face. I like you. Um, thank you, thank you, Petros. I've I, I I have I've gotten a lot of comments that my face just looks very very honest. Um, can my next series attack coaches for not having the 4x pot pro bets in their post flop sims definitely be yeah maybe when we look at deep stack stuff just like mate why the fuck are you not probing six of the pot here you're a fucking simp all right i'm gonna, gonna get demonetized for that um eric smith 
uh, something something paid content other creators isn't informative from a teaching perspective I mean it wasn't really meant to be informative from a teaching perspective it was just me it was just me like reacting to the shit this this, this one's gonna be more informative I hope we'll, 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 we'll go we'll go through the we'll go through the sims um snarly laughing yep 100 I, I agree uh a little actual reasoning as to why things are going wrong look if if uh, if i explained if i explained all the reasoning in the video that video would have been like four hours long it's all right i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to break it down so we get we get we get more views break it down to multiple videos so we get more views thanks eric um is, is Eric Smith even a real name? I sh I'm sure. I'm sure that's something that that I would have wrote on. That I would have just wrote into some box as a as a fake name. Um. What is the rest of this guy saying? Various Sims use single open sizes. I mean, we, yeah, we, we're going to do that today. We're going to look at various Sims who use single open sizes and see how shit they are. Uh, dual trans come come back to fucking troll me again. My god, like I I, sw I swear I cut that guy's tongue out in the in the upswing group, and then people got shitty at me for it. Um, it's alright. I'm not part of the upswing group anymore. Uh, for 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 a variety of reasons, as some of you guys have probably probably figured out. Uh, more replies. I don't know who this Molly person is. She seems nice. G'day Molly, you're, 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 you, you seem like a nice person. You might not be a nice person, but you seem like a nice person. And a lot of people like that. Um, Shrey in the chat. Oh yeah, here's, here's Molly again. Something about Alvin. More replies. Some random crap. Okay, cool. Excellent. That is the comment section of the previous video. It's always a lot of fun going through comments. Um, what's everyone else saying in the chat? Hello, everyone. Who, who else we got? I filthy. Nathan. Matthew. Good day. Dunskies. Why are like no high stakes regs like Goose Core? My name is Carl and my show Macedov gain so much EV. Maybe they just don't know about it. Or maybe they just don't care. Um, lots of people just keep doing what they're doing. Simping for girls in comment section. There is there is a zero percent zero percent chance that Molly gets with me. Um Honestly, like my my, I look at the viewer statistics, and it's like ninety nine point five percent blokes between the age of twenty and thirty five. So if if you're if you're a dude between the age of twenty one and thirty five, shout out, g'day, hello. Um. Honestly, if you if you if 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 you were a chick and you want to pick up guys, just go go to go to your local poker room um all right what are we looking at first oh yeah we're, we're, we're gonna go through and um look at some of the simps themselves because because i ran a few of them and and god they were like really really easy to run um honestly like this one here Anyway, something ridiculous. Um, we're we're gonna see which one this each each different simp is gonna have slightly different settings, and the, the different settings are just gonna impact the ranges a little bit. But other than that, like the ranges end up being roughly the same. The the, the core of the ranges, the the value component, I guess you could call it, ends up being ends up being basically the same. Get a blueber. Look at the ranges. This is the the low jack range. This is a two and a half x open. We can compare it to, to the two and a half x open that uh, Jonka viewer has, and this Jonka viewer one 
was ran by something, I can't remember. For some reason, a lot of people got like really annoyed about the BTS ranges. I guess we can go over them again. Anyway, th this is this is the, the 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 opening ranges for each of them, and this is in the in the simp that I ran. Where did it go? Uh, I want to do a left right comparison for you guys. Oh, that's ugly as fuck. Um, oh, that's better. Is this, does this look too different to this? Not really. I mean, the rake in this simp that I ran is a little bit higher. In terms of the width of the range, 17.6 versus 17.7. Um, so same width, roughly. Within a tenth of a percent, roughly the same hands. Six is best line to be folded here. The sevens plus. King eight suited, you know, you got the queen nine suited, king all the time. There's ten, j king jack. It's basically the same. For two and a half. Fold. I mean, at, at Al Althea? Is that, is that how you say it? That sounds like a, um, sounds like a Greek name. Hang on, what, what comes after Septillion? Octillion, of course. Play a hundred octillion on, on Zinger. Twenty-two percent for the hijack. Here I've got twenty-one point five. Would you look at that? I mean, the range is almost, almost identical. And, and like the, 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 this simp, I ran on a on a sixty-four gigabyte machine. Fuck, where did it go? Oh, I double clicked it. Um, on a 64 gigabyte machine in like two days. All right. Uh, 29.3. I mean, it's interesting why why my sims are opening wider than than these sims. And like, if you look at like this opening range, is actually closer to. To the mega to the mega sims that I ran, and maybe it's just because I, I know how to run sims so much better than these people that even my shittiest sims end up being better than their best sims. Who the fuck knows? Maybe that's the reason. Like I'm I'm pretty sure if I if I'm pretty sure like some of these were the the, the post flop stuff for this ends up being like some really big abstraction, but very few post flop sizes. But mine's a bit different. Mine's got like a very small, uh, a much smaller post flop extraction with with many more sizes. So you end up getting better accuracy post flop, and so then your pre flop EP ends up being better. Anyway, uh, forty one point five seems a bit small. What do I have? Forty five point seven. Uh, what are people saying? I feel the pure opens too tight. Mixed frequency stuff, taking the, the tight route. Pull under three votes and over calls, so question mark. Anyway, moral of the story is these these simps are very easy to run if you know what you're doing. And now let's have a look at how to exploit them and how much we can exploit them by. Um, and before we look at that. We'll first look at a really good sim, this button, button open sim, and we'll calculate roughly what the EV for, for opening the button is, shall we? I don't, I don't have it right here, but we can we can calculate it very quickly by just multiplying this table with itself by just doing the um, column multiplication. Um, so 0 0.86 percent times 0 0.55. Plus 13.35% times 0 0.56 plus 26.19% times 0 0.58 plus 3.55 times 0 0.57 plus 
6% times 0 0.57 plus 0 0.16 times 0 0.6. Um, and then we're just going to ignore that tiny amount there. All right, 25.6. Um, big blind for 100 hands. By opening the button. Um, if you're using a, a, a mixed strategy and if the response, if the defense to the mixed strategy is also a multi-size strategy, right? You know, you've got a, a nice multi-size strategy in terms of defending from the small blind and the big blind. Like this, for example, with nice, good three bet sizes, um, accurate for the rake, calling range, ability to donk, playing post slot reasonably well, etc. You should be able to, to cap the EV of the button at 25.6 uh, big blinds behind your hands by opening button. Seem reasonable, everyone following so far. That's just how the calculation goes. Okay, great. Now we will look at a simp crusher sim. Okay. Basically, I'll talk. I'll talk you through the the construction of the of the simp sim itself. Um, there's there's a bunch of different. Uh, what what am I looking at? Say for example, we open this one up. We're already there. What am I talking about? This is this is right right here. We're, we're on the button here. It's folded to us. We need to decide what to do with with our hands. Okay. Say for example, button opens up. This lot of hands. Right. You're hoping that with this lot of hands, you can get that twenty five point six or better. And you're probably going to achieve that against the players that, you know, play through a bit of fold here from the small blind. And if they're playing through a bit of fold here from the small blind, they're not going to have any flats, so there's no multi-way um, considerations. Uh, hello, cat. And now, flatting here at the big blind, right? And what, what uh, through bit sizes have I put into this, to this simp sim? Um about 4x out of position which is what like a lot of people will will decide to do a lot of people will decide to um, 4x out of position and 3x at in position um, where are we with this chunk of your fun opens this is a little bit more than 4x We can look in the Monka. This range here, this is this sort of range here. I mean, it's kind of similar. This, this, and uh, the the reason why this range here looks so merged is because there's not enough bet sizes on the flop in this particular sim. Um, and it just needs more flop bet sizes in order to get get uh, to make sure polarity because like it just ends up like three quarter buying the flop or, or something ridiculous um, in its post swap sim. Not sure where this is from, but it looks like something from Range Converter, right? So if you have more flop bet sizes, you end up with a little bit more polarity in the pre flop through through bet range, even for the same um, or even smaller number of big blinds, just because you want you want some. Uh, some more polarity in your range. So, I mean, both of these look reasonable, and I've run sims on each of these to as like a counter. Seems reasonable that you would do this, right? But the fact is that if you're doing this, you know, 4x out of position with, you know, a, a sim that's been calculated specifically for that open size, but only has one three bit size, stuff like 4x. Um, 4x, a little bit more than 4x, out of position, through bet sizes. You're, you're going to end up 
having a bad time. Here, for example, this min, min raise from the button. This is how the small blind continues against the min raise when it's playing through a bit of fold. This seems like something logical to do, right? I mean, you're playing through a bit of fold, the button opens 45% of hands, and you're continuing 15% of hands. That that, that 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 makes you feel warm and fuzzy, doesn't it? Um. Anyway, so where, where are we here? Three betting here, 12.4%. I mean, I think I touched on this last time where like... When you open smaller, the three bet, the three bet percentage goes down when you run sims like this. When you run sims with only one open size. Um, and like you're only assuming that your opponent is only using one open size. And if you were following something from like Jonko, you would get the same thing, 14.7. Um, against a two big blind open. 11.9 so smaller smaller open size means less three betting which just is just illogical it, it it just means that like you're you're you end up grossly overreacting to overreacting to the to the lack of polarity for this open size um, because everything all the hands are within the one range this this open to two big blinds this min open is two polar and so you end up overreacting to that by um, playing passively. Also, the three-bit size itself is a bit shit. So, and and that's kind of what 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 you get when you don't really, when you haven't really um, looked at a lot of preflop. You you just you know, you don't really know what the three-bit sizes should be. Um, and so you just fall back on old stuff like three betting four times the open when you're out of position, three times the open when you're in position, blah blah blah. Um, not going to throw about fifteen percent against the min raise Dunskis. I mean, what 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 do you think they should be throw betting against the min raise? <laughs> because if you're smart, it 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 would be roughly the same range. All right, three big blind open. Here, I mean, the small one's doing doing basically the same thing as the three bit one open. But now, now the buttons increase their th their three bit frequency. So like, you three betting four x out of position, and like if you're not if you're not changing your your three bit um your three bit size and making it closer to like the number of, to total number of big blinds, and you're doing things with sort of poor construction and poor width. Of the opening range, sorry, of the three-bet range, you, you end up in a lot of trouble. So here, for example, here, fourteen point one percent three-betting like this. Three bets to fourteen point five, which is bigger than the one I've got here. Only only had a three-bet to twelve and a bit um, over the three x. You know, so you you you're three-betting four x, right? D does that is it, it seems like it should work, right? Seems like it should work. <laughs> Althea, yes, yes. Um. Uh. What What else is there? I think this one was just looking specifically at. Oh, this is a fun one. I guess we could touch that later. Three and a half. Specifically at the button open, just because I didn't really want to do it for the entire tree because it's a bit unnecessary. Um, opening pot 13.7 now the small blind yeah okay throw betting 14% out of the big blind three bet range three bet size so you actually pull 4x um, four, a little less than 4x here for the small blind so like 4x the open and like it, it feels reasonable like if, if, if I gave a beginner, the, these these preflop simps, they would feel warm and fuzzy inside because they have something to fall back on. Um, and a lot of people use them. Like a lot of people use use these these kinds of these kinds of ranges. Four X open. This is just getting a little bit more out of line. Um, you don't know, to be honest. I mean, if you don't know, you don't know. That's fine. Just admit that you don't know, and then and just say, okay, well, I want to figure it out. How do I figure it out? Maybe I should 
go to someone who, who knows what they're talking about rather than just you know stabbing in the dark Attra yeah flooding is attracted due to the great odds so you should be playing you should be playing some calls there the small blind um obviously not quite as many calls out of the small blind min raise from the button as you would against like the low jack um because you're going to get squeezed by the big bundle all the time. Anyway, calling range here, three betting range here, three bet size against the four x, a little bit less than, a little bit less than a four x, um, three bet against the four x open. Like it seems, it seems like something that a coach from four years ago would would tell you to do, right? Um, what was the last one I went to look at? Oh yeah, this limp. <laughs> if, if you're playing, if you're playing limp or fold out of the small blind, um, I think we should account for rake. Most of the charts for 500 now with less than one big blind cap. Yeah, rake is a thing. This is the, this is the, the ISO size, isolation size against a small blind limp. If they're playing limp or limp or fold, but uh, so the isolation frequency to four x. Did I accidentally change that? No, I didn't. Um, is, if, if you know anything about the small mind limp, this is like a very low number. It should be closer to fifty percent because of the fifty percent rule. Um, anyway, so the counter strategy. Is pretty easy to calculate. You calculate the the counter strategy to it. Uh, which one do I want to look at? Duh, duh, duh. Here. Okay. Um, this is the updated version, guys. Uh, sorry, Alex hasn't put it into the 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 old version yet of the Simp Crusher. So the 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 simp the simp crusher any tips for plebs i mean you can turn this off and it just tells you what to do um so this is the old simp crusher ones instead of opening at um at a frequency of you know only 45 percent we're now like bumping it up to 55 percent on the button um, and this was just of the three sizes, and you can see that, like, overall, different hands go to different sizes most of the time. Sure, some hands mix, but, like, it's only really mixing because post-flop, the solver will try to overcome, try to play in a way that reduces, reduces the amount of, um, reduces the size of the mistake pre-flop. Daniel saying, I think it might be valuable to run a sim crusher sim with 0% donks and 0% overbets on the flop. <laughs> oh, would you look at that? I have done that just here. There you go. Um, so this, this sim crusher sim, called small post flop edge, assumes no donking and uh, slightly limited post flop sizes. So if you're playing against weaker opponents post flop, um, especially weaker opponents who use these old charts, these really you know shitty charts from from other training sites, etc. You can you can play something similar to this, and they'll just be thrown way off. Um, and yeah, so in terms of the overall EV that you can gain, as we discussed earlier, the button open EV was at, at roughly equilibrium or like at using an equilibrium sim that we're trying to compute the equilibrium open and equilibrium three bit sizes etc that particular sim gave us a 25.6 bb100 and now this sim crusher sim is good to the updated one with more with even more sizes um, and I think the EV is very similar in this slightly older one is at 28.6. Um, 
So that, that, that three big blinds per hundred might not seem like, like a lot, but three big blinds per hundred is often the difference between someone who's, you know, breaking even with, with the games and someone who's destroying the games. And in addition, this 28.6 assumes that the opponents are going to be playing in a way to perfectly counteract their preflop mistake. It assumes that the players are aware of their preflop mistake and are playing post-slot in, in a way to, to defend appropriately. Um, in, in the small edge sim, uh, I wonder if I have it on this machine. Oh yeah, this is the old one. Yeah, this is a small edge one. Uh, 29.4. So you end up with an extra four big blinds per 100 if your opponents um, are unaware of their preflop mistake and aren't really um, adjusting as much to it. Uh, anyway, so this is this is the old this is the old one. There's going to be an updated version of this, so I'll show it to you guys. You can go through it quickly. And there's more being run. I ran one for the small blind as well. Small blind was really fun. Lots of limping in, in the small blind one. Um, you can you can it's it's pretty 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 easy. You see, like you're opening big with a with a more polar range. It's not really assuming that your opponents are overfolding, underfolding. Um, it's just assuming that your opponents are using, you know, through bit sizes that are too too responsive to your open size. Um, and using the ranges which are slightly wrong, they're reacting to, to ranges which are not not particular polar. Um, they just end up getting, you know, kind of wrecked. So let's have a look at it. Two big blind open. Small blind raises to 125, 125% uh, of the pot or 8.25. Seems something like a small blind would do. Uh, this big blind. Oh, full bet range also locked. Defense, the the individual hands don't really matter because like you look at the weights, there's there's just no, none of those strong hands in there. So you turn the weights off, there's just no strong hands left. Um, folding 65%, calling 35%. And it's like a lot of the middling hands in the opening range. Um, basically all the middling hands are being used there, right? So like if you've if you say a lot of these preflop uh, sims here, reset tree button here, I mean, that's a bit ridiculous. Let's go look at this too. Like, if you're playing something like this before, like the hands that are in the middle, with the exception of like the very strongest hands. Ah, uh, shit. Wrong, 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 wrong thing. Here. Um, are in that mid open size. Um. You have a big blind defense chart versus a 2.5x from the button. A button opens to 3x, you just fold the combos on the edges and more margin was that not what the sim would, the sim would show. N not not exactly. You, you, you're going to have to tell me exactly what your 3-bet strategy is going to be, Dunskis, against the 3x open. Right. Does, does this seem like a reasonable 3x? Does this seem like a reasonable 3-bet um, strategy to you out of the big blind against a 3x open? Because this was taken straight out of a sim. Like, what, what I'm trying to show you is that you can take data straight out of the sims that, that other people run and then exploit the shit out of them by using multiple multiple sizes, slightly different sizes of different parts of your range. Alt the uh yeah if if you're if you're if you're if you're playing in in a in a way to try to exploit your opponent's inability to you know play correctly against the different open sizes you don't necessarily have to open any any of these strong hands to the small size. Uh, Brian's saying theoretical problem with comparing EVs of different souls. 
multiple solutions. EVs are not unique outside of the two plays or some. Yeah, sure. Um, look, when when you got rake, you can't you can't even really prove that. Um, like rake's not even zero sum, so it's it's like three players in the game when there's rake, so it's a bit it's a bit confusing. You end up getting multiple positions of equilibria. Anyway, we're saying NL hero. Sim big blind defense chart equilibrium strat versus. Button opener is forced to only use to be blind RFI range. That strat is not valid. This is someone who can change size exploitatively. Yeah, that's 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 exactly right. Um, NL hero, like if you're if you're playing here, if you're playing like if if this um, chart here was the only one you had, and it's the only one that a lot of people have was the only chart you used and you didn't know what what the correct 3-bit size was against different opens um, and what sort of the, the width of the opening range is, uh, width of the defending range is supposed to be but mainly it's the 3-bit size and the 3-bit range if you don't have that then you can't defend properly against a different, different open size right if you have different sims and you play it like this against the min open and you play it like this against the 3x open I, I end up I end up making like an extra 4 big blinds off you just by opening the button with with the mixed strategy with exploits um, with just the preflop exploit right if, if you're not aware of the ability for players to use multiple open sizes then you end up very exploitable. Um, Guillaume has a Fantasia. Can't produce mental images, that's interesting. Um, does that just mean like you think in words? Good fella, good day. No fantasy pepper hands, alright. Any other, any any other questions? Oh, you might as well get a small one then. Yeah, this is this is this is the newer one I'm going to put up. Um, it's got the pot size open as well and the four x open as well. Um, so you guys have a bit of fun with that. Look at that limping frequency out of the out of the small one here. <laughs> There's limbs all of its trash, and it's because if you don't if you don't know what um, what size you wanna you wanna isolate, how wide you need to isolate, how, how to respond against like the limp limp three bet kind of stuff. If, if you don't know how wide you need to be when you're isolating of the limp. Um, DF newbie, can I uh, show you the exploit to 2.5x button open? It's not really the point. Can it stars reg games at 5k now? Sure. Blobert is asking, will the updated sync crusher ranges have more villain response through bit sizes, a lot of them through bit to the same size, no matter your RFI size? Yeah, I mean, I run a different set of sims for that. Um, Dunsky's, okay, how does having multiple open sizes change the, the post lot solves? Because immediately your game tree is substantially more complicated, and in reality you lose, you, know, you don't lose EV, man. You just play it the same way post flop. You, start, you play it the exact same way as you would if, if you were, if you were playing the equilibrium size, if we were equilibrium open size for that spot. You just play it the exact same way because, like, your 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 opponent, your opponent's strategy, um, your 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 opponent's strategy is 
essentially fixed. When you're doing any kind of exploit, you, you need to assume that you, your opponent's strategy is reasonably fixed. <laughs> yeah, Animal Hero, Hero is right. If if they don't know what you're doing, then then your your EV is going to be the same. Um, post flop. Because where, where does your EV come from, right? I mean, like, I had this debate over and over again, and people just don't understand it. Where does your EV come from? I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure I did this, this uh, paint session in the previous one as well. When, when you're calculating what your expected value is, right, the expected value of one of your hands, let's just say um, a hand in your range. Your range is the random variable capital X, right? And your specific hand is lowercase x, okay? So we're looking at the EV of this particular hand here, right? Don't, the underline doesn't really mean anything. Um, what, what is this equal to, right? This is equal to the expected value of the utility function right um for for you with your particular hand lowercase x um in your strategy right uh with your strategy with that hand all right so let's just say this is hero so the strategy for hero with that particular hand against your opponent's strategy with their range, okay? So let's just say that their range is, is Y, right? Okay. So the, these these strategy numbers are, um, you know, random, right? There's a random component to the strategy. And your opponent's range at a particular hand is, is also random. You can model it with a random variable. And so if you take the expected value of the utility function of these two strategies, you end up with, with your EV. Now, now here's, here's the trick. If if you fix this, right, you know your opponent's range, and you fix this, you know your opponent's strategy, right? If these two are fixed, right, then this term here is is a constant, right? So it's it's, it's not it's not a random variable anymore. Okay, I, I, I know we've lost people when, when I started to get the whiteboard out because people are people were excited to leave. And so then, if, if this is a constant, your expected value with, with your hand is just the way that you play your hand, given your opponent's strategy, right? It's just the way that you play your hand. This is the only thing that's changing now. This is the only variable. So your EV depends on the way that you play your hand in your opponent's strategy, okay? So, say for example, your, let's, let's, let's use a, um, uh, what are they called? Metaphor. Let's 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 use let's use a let's use a metaphor. Say you're starting here, right, and you're 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 on you're on the edge of a you're on the edge of a forest. Okay, this is a forest. I can barely draw um, on paint. This is a forest. Okay, you're standing on the edge of a forest. You're going through the forest. You've got some different options about which way you want to go through the forest. Okay. And then each of those options, it branches out and you've got other options you can choose. Right. Different options you can, you can take inside the forest. And each of these paths is going to lead you down to some particular outcome. Right. And some of those outcomes are going to be better for you than, than others. Right. And some of those outcomes you don't really know, okay? 
your goal is to try to find the best path that leads to the best outcome. Okay? Now, that's what your goal is as a poker player with your particular hand. This whole forest is your opponent's strategy. All right? Your opponent's strategy is going to give you different outcomes depending on which path you take. And it's up to you as a strong poker player to try to find the line with your hand that gives you the best outcome, at least on average. And so what this, this, is, this is what this piece of math is just saying. So when, when you're opening these different, different open sizes, you're just taking the first step in that, in that exploit, right? What I've done for you is essentially calculate from the open sizes um, available in the sim, which of the ones is going to be more likely to lead to a good outcome for the particular hand given your opponent's fixed preflop strategy taken from preflop charts so hopefully that mistake happy that that makes um, sense to everyone apec cad sorry i don't speak i don't speak russian so i probably butchered that um oh no is that an R? No, it's a P. Um, any chance I run exploit sims with small blind three bets, like 18 to 20 percent, quite common profile in mid stakes pool. I mean, if if your small blind is three betting you 18 to 20 percent of the time, you just four bet the shit out of them. Um, I don't really know what. I mean, if, if you know that they're going to three bet you a lot, then, then the answer is pretty easy. You tighten up your opening range because you know you're going to get three bet. Um, a shit ton, and then you and then you fall back a lot when they do three bet you. Um, a small blind three bet of eighteen to twenty percent is is um, is pretty high. Samar is asking if you give a solver two hundred sizes, will it use them all up? Depends on what the sizes are, but, but probably no. Um, Like, like here, for example, in this heads up sim that I ran, I mean, this, this sim isn't run to very high precision, but it's got a lot of sizes. It's got a lot of sizes that are very close. And because it's got a lot of sizes that are very close, the solver can't really tell the difference between the, between them. Um, and so it's going to be taking um, some sizes. Right, so, I mean, if it ran to a high precision, maybe it would, you know, end up rejecting some of these some of these sizes and just choose the smaller ones more more often. Um, but I mean, all of them are being used a little bit of the time, at least at the beginning, right? Because it, the solver in, in its calculation, it needs to use the size in order to figure out that it's shit. Um, so when you, when you run it to a higher level of precision, it eventually figures out that that size is worse than, than the other size it could have chose. Um, and those sizes end up going to zero, but you end up getting the response to it pretty nicely. So that's what it look like what it looks like, and you end up can you can, you can draw some of, kind of like a little bit of, little bit of a curve with with the open sizes. Um, so here with the min open, two point one big blinds, two point two big blinds, etc. DF newbie, yeah, DF newbie. Not everyone's as smart as you. Jesus Christ, man, you gotta dumb it down for the rest of us. Um, <laughs> Alright, so that's the simp pressure stuff. Um, yeah. So, you get the simp crusher, just kind of opening range, so without the preflop edge. This is post flop edge, sorry. This is with the post flop edge. So if you think that you have an edge over your opponent's post flop, or at least an edge over that particular opponent post flop, you can play a bit wider in position. 
Um, and people keep saying that like humans play poorly out of position. I mean, they do, but they, they also play pretty shit in position as well. Oh yeah, and in the, the Sim Crusher, you also got the, the previous exploit sims as well. So Danskis is saying, I'm not sure is whether or not opening to a different size changes some fundamental aspect of the response strategy rather than being a math problem regarding the price you get on an open yeah yeah so it, it changes it changes it changes exactly how you're going to be responding right um so we can like look at this 100 big blind standard put the button open this is the the, the two big blind open and you can you know you can tally up these um you can tally up these three bit percentages um so what's that one and a half eight and a half 13 and a half 14 14 a bit 14 a bit against the two big blind open and then against three big blind open how big is a big blind how, how often is a big blind through bidding um seven and a half what is that 12 13 13-ish percent so you end up through betting less often from from the blinds against the bigger opens rather than more often so if if you if you're doing the opposite of that which is which is kind of what you'll get if you're looking at oversimplified preflop trees then the oversimplified preflop trees, then you'll just get destroyed by someone who uses multiple open sizes. Um, good fella, will there be more tutorials about how to use them? How, if, if you have Simp Crusher, then I'll probably put the tutorials into the Simp Crusher course itself. Just because when we're going through the ranges in depth, um, and uh, with some play and explain stuff, it'll it'll uh it'll be very dependent on the ranges and how to interpret them because one one thing is running the sim and the other thing is interpreting the sim um so yeah in sim crusher you also get this stuff all right this was fun uh no no sorry that's the wrong one this is mislabeled there we go This is one um, for you guys who are playing live and you want to figure out how to exploit people who like limp weak hands and raise, raise their strong hands. Um, here you go, limp, limping the weak hands. And this is the hijack. Flat's <laughs> 12.4%. This over limp is 12.4%. I mean, it's, it's mainly because of the uh, lag opponents behind like if you if you limp and then you know these people are going to try and isolate the limp if you try and isolate the limp uh with a range that's too wide you just end up running into trouble um exploit loop loose passive loose passive Weak passive, loose aggressive. Oh yeah, this is fun. Exploiting loose aggressives. That's how you play in the low jack when you when you're up against a bunch of loose aggressive players. Is is this is this a reasonable isolation range? Out of the hijack, hijack versus low jack, or is this too wide? Because th th this percentage, I'm pretty sure, I just took straight out of like mass database analysis. Hijack folds. 20%. I'm pretty sure just took the percentages out of the, out of the mass database analysis. Here the button's starting to spaz out. It doesn't even know what it's doing anymore. Um, okay. Any other questions? Anything you want to look at? 
so moral of the story um, is that not having good proflop sims means that you're very exploitable you're, you're exploitable by, by, by a fairly large margin and uh, this set of preflop sims in the simp crusher is going to go and um, exploit them for you or at least help you exploit them for you uh, Samar is asking if I'm running to planning to run planning to run sims for higher rank I'm, I'm not going to be running sims for higher rank uh, reason being is because like these UGS sims are enough for you to get to a level where you can play um, in this rake. So if, if you understand these these sims enough of the time and you can make your own sort of minor adjustments to them for the rake. Yeah, I've still got time dot. You can you can quickly use these ranges to get to a level where where the rake applies. Right, because this is five big blinds, five percent kept that one big blind, um, and so that's between two hundred and five hundred NL, roughly, depending on which site you play. So if you use these, hopefully you'll be able to quickly get there, and so then you won't have that problem with paying a high amount of rake in the micros because you've lifted yourself out of the micros. You lift yourself out of out of the low stakes games with high rake. Yeah, if you have any questions, just ask away. All right. These um these these sim crusher sims will be, will be put up into the viewer. So if you if you if you get if you already have the viewer, then um, get the sim crusher stuff. If if you don't have the viewer, then get the viewer. This first one here, Petros. If you think you use these ranges at twenty five or fifty nl, we're going to be ahead of the pool. Yes. Um. Doc Adam specifically heads up sim specifically in small one flooding range for six max. Yeah, I mean I've got all of that. So you go to Zenith.poker and then you click the shop and this is the first one gets you gets you access to the to the dynamic viewer. DF newbie, can I see the big blind versus 2.5x only? Like this. Is that where you want it? And I, I know that's not what you wanted, but that's what I'm showing you. Um, I know you've already got this one. Um, yeah, if, if you don't have the Sims, if you don't have the viewer, get the viewer first. And the viewer is um, there's a free trial on the viewer. You can just literally just go to click on the preflop. Once you've made an account, just click on the preflop. And then you, and then you just um, you end up getting the small blind, yeah, small blind and button opens for free just to try it out. And then if you like it, you can you can then go and buy the dynamic viewer itself. Uh, good fellow, you don't need the viewer for the sim crusher and elite ranges, right? Uh, yeah, you you, you you don't need them. No. If you, if you just bought the Simp Crusher, then, then you would just get, get the Simp Crusher ranges and you wouldn't get any of the other viewer ranges. Although most people buy the, the full 6 max stuff first. Um, live Cash Elites and Online Cash Elites. Online Cash Elites is pretty new. Tournament Preflop Age is going to be pretty new. I'm going to be running those Sims um, for tournaments specifically and um, low rake Sims online cash elites so looking at lower rake for higher higher games 
um, because basically what's happened is um, over the past year or so people have moved up very quickly by following my shit um, and now they want now there's a demand for sims with even lower rake than 500 nl and if it's got lower rake than 500 nl you're, you're guessing at what what level these guys are playing at so you know playing at uh, 2k nl or above even some 1k nl Petros, when you don't have the viewer, you see the ranges on PDF on the site of Zenith. The, um... Okay, there's a bunch of questions coming through. I don't really understand what you mean, Petros. A lot of the ranges, all of the older ranges, I gave away for free. The ranges from last year I gave away for free. The ranges that I run this year, some of them I put into early access, other ones I'm keeping closer to my chest and just putting them straight into the viewer. Um, what's, what computers do I use to run The Sims? Um, often, okay, so say for example, this this particular sim here, just the low jack open, right? Just the high jack open, okay? Just the open and the response to the open needs a 256 gigabyte of RAM computer and is usually ran run on like machines with Threadripper CPUs or, or equivalent, um, sometimes servers with dual CPUs, uh, dual Epic CPUs on, on like Contabo and stuff. Um, so I did that for low jack, the open, the low jack limp response. Hijack open, hijack limp, hijack 3x. Um, similarly for cutoff. Now button is small blind because like it, it ends up the, the, the tree ends up being a bit smaller. Usually you can run both of them um, in the same computer at the same time. And then you, you end up having less problems, slightly less problems with bunching out of the button folding range. Um, so yeah, your computer wouldn't be able to run them. Is there any way to view small blind versus big blind strat strategy in general if you don't have the RAM? Yeah, just get the viewer. Like here, small blind versus big blind strategy. You, you, you just get the viewer, 100 big blind standard or 200 big blinds, depending on you know how deep you want to play. And you click the small blind and it tells you small blind versus big blind. And it tells you the limping range, the, the, a good response to the limping range, you know. Here, this is this is isolating 38 percent rather than rather than 26 percent. Um, it tells you how to respond to different sizes. You can copy the range, and you just like copy and paste. So, for example, you just want to copy, right-click copy, and you copy it into your post-flop um, solver, right? As a normalized range, you go into the configuration. You can change the colors if these colors hurt your eyes, or if you're colorblind. Some people prefer different colors. Everyone's eyes are a little bit different, um, which is just like a huge thing for for some people. Some people like they just can't they just can't distinguish any of these colors, so they they need different color sets. Um, and like people don't really think about you know other people's eye problems. Um, Doc talking about post flop, not pre flop. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've got a bunch of them too. So, in the library, I think there's some older ones maybe. Chibit pots here. Yeah, this one, this is just for GTA Plus. Um, in order to run good, good post flop, small one versus big one sims, you, you also need a, a machine with about 256 gigabytes of RAM. Um, there's that. But th then there's also like, there's also the early access stuff, which um, I'm running. I think you get it even in early access light. So you get early access light. Yeah, you get um, small blind versus big blind, three blind open. 
And I think that set of Sims is almost done, if I remember correctly. It's only got like monotone or something left. I just, I just like haven't uploaded all of them yet. Um, but I will soon. Like you can get this stuff. You can just, yeah. And so, and so you get that by either getting early access pro or early access light. Um, or if you really love me, you get the early access bundle and then you get even, you get an even cheaper price on, uh, on next year's post slot simulations. Oh yeah. Sorry, 20 point. I missed your question. Are solvers able to solve multi-way flops now? Will they be able to, to anytime soon? Yes, yeah, solvers can solve multi-way flops. They just don't do it very well yet. Um, and if you do it, want to do it real fast, you need a special kind of solver with like a neural net most of the time attached to it with, um, with, uh, and that neural net is usually pretty big. Um, so it ends up being, ends up requiring a ridiculous amount of RAM. Um, but in terms of being able to solve multi-way flops, yeah, you can do it in Monka Solver post-flop. And I think I have two videos, two, two recent live streams, I think. Um, two different live streams, I think. Uh, they were titled How to Crush Multi-Way Pots Using a Solver, Part 1 and Part 2. So if you just go on the, the YouTube channel and then scroll back there, you can have a look. Um, Julian, can I release those preflop charts for free again? W which preflop charts? Um, any idea on how ICM sims will look like? My understanding with, with the ICM stuff is that they're just going to be a lot of folding against the open. Um, there are way too many Nash equilibriums for multi-way flops, isn't it? No, usually there's just going to be um, a handful of very close Nash, Nash equilibriums. Nash equilibria. Uh, why did you stop working for upswing? Because they're, they're fucking simps, man. They're simps. Why would I want to work for a bunch of simps? Uh, Julian, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what... I don't know which, which ones you're talking about. Which which pre-flop shots you were talking about? The, the the old ones. Why why would anyone use the old ones? Uh, I'll 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 make I'll make a set of ranges to exploit my old sims, my my old, my old um, pre-flop charts. Shall I? I mean, it's going to be pretty difficult. It's going to end up looking fairly similar because they were taken straight out of sims that um, were already pretty high quality to start with. Um, getting the viewer for heads up. Yeah, I mean this 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 old heads up. This this heads up. Same. Oh, where is it? Um. The precision isn't like, sub like sublime. It's not like amazing precision, but um, you you get you get a good idea. It's got, it's got loads of sizes in it. So you get a, a, a decent idea about what the um, what the uh, what the charts, what the um, what the strategy is for the different for different sizes, and like it tells you how to play heads up uh, preflop better than better than any set of charts will because there's just so many sizes. Like you, you can't even you can't even. I mean, this is like 15 sizes. It, t it tells you how to respond against any size. You don't actually have to use all the sizes. I mean, you can if you want, or you just pick one and then just use that. Um, pick one you think your opponent's going to be bad at and use that. Why? Why would I? Why would I release my old simp charts? Like the reason why I took them down was because people were people were getting wrecked. You're better using these ones. How drastically does the post drop the post strategy alter when using multiple preflop sizes? I mean, it, honestly, it doesn't change that much. Literally, the best preflop tool ever seen for free. Yeah, I mean, I tend to do that. Yeah, the reason why it's got fifteen sizes for the heads up is because then it tells you how to respond to each of those sizes in a reasonable way, right? 
you don't have to use them yourself you just, you, but you do have to know how to respond to them because your opponent's going to use them right if, you're, if your opponent's always using like 2.3 2.3, 2.3, 2.2, 2.2, 2.2, 2 like over and over and over again. Like, then you get really good at um, at these things, right? You get really good at the response. Um, and and also, if they start like flip flopping between a few of the different open sizes themselves, just to try and like um, you know give you some give you some grief, then you then you get all the responses. The only, the only response that I don't have in this sim, and it's I'm probably going to re redo it. Um, I'm probably going to redo it later. I think there's a rainbow one. Yeah, there's a rainbow. No, that's not a rainbow. That's that's a really fucked up rainbow. Fish. Yo, what am I looking at? Simpsons. Alternate. I mean, this is pretty close, right? This is like kind of a rainbow. Um, I saw. Yeah, yeah I'll just stick the standard. Um, Doc saying, I think you'd get significantly more complex post flop if you use multiple pre flop sizing since every decision tree in poker where you split the ranges makes the other ranges grow in complexity. I mean, not really. The, 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 the game is already pretty complex, right? And if you're trying to simplify down the game, you end up just, you know, cornering yourself into a box. To go into this again, like, say for example, say for example, I'm using like the the, the simp crusher stuff, right? Or just you know, just picking three three sizes out of a hat, and uh, the three sizes are slightly different. Okay. This is preflop size one, right? Right, so size one, size two, size three. And then let's just have a say I go on the flop now, right? And this is gonna be flop size one, size two, size three. It's not unreasonable for me to study a little bit of each of these. Right. So, for example, I study a bit of this, and a bit of this, and then a bit of this. Right, and then a bit of this, and then a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this. Okay. My my intuition in one of them is going to apply reasonably well to you know the spots that are similar, right? You, 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 you following? Because they're, they're similar sizes, right? The sizes are, aren't, aren't too, too different. Um, and my intuition in one can flow over to the next one. But my intuition in this one here can't really, it doesn't really work with, with this size here, right? Just because it's too different. So if it's close, then my intuition in one is going to work with, with the other one. But it's not going to work over here, right? So that's why I study that myself, right? I study that myself so then any any mistakes that I make in my intuition are going to be corrected for at least somewhat. Now say for example I'm playing against an opponent who is really, really good at this. Okay. Then whenever whenever I take this this particular line, right, I'm going to be at a, at a disadvantage or at least a slight disadvantage, right? But in the other eight different parts of the parts of the tree, I'm going to be at a, at a at a at an advantage, right? So maybe 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 my opponent's intuition will be able to work here, here, and here, right? They don't work as well here. It doesn't work as well here, and it's not going to work as well here or here or here here or here, right? So basically, what that what that means is I'm going to have uh, a, a big advantage in in these kinds of spots over my opponent. I'll have a reasonable fighting chance here, and I'll just be at a slight disadvantage here, right? Right. So I'll be at a disadvantage here, right? So sure, I'll be at a slight disadvantage in 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 the line that my opponent studied studied to death, maybe. Um, 
but in slightly different lines, I'll be at, at an advantage against them because their intuition isn't going to, to, to be as good as the spot that I've actually studied. And, and the spots were too far away from my opponent's intuition, I'm just going to have a huge advantage over them. Because going from studying nothing to studying um, a small amount or you know a reasonable amount for for the the, the level that you're playing um, you're gonna end up you're gonna end up with um, with with large advantage over your opponents um, and it might not and it, it might not necessarily just have to be like preflop size one flop size right it could just be preflop size and then preflop size and then three bit size and then four bit size and then immediately if you start a little bit of, of each of them you, you'll get an advantage when the stack pot ratio is, is this particular amount and you understand what the preflop range is going to kind of look like um, in, in, inside, inside say a 4-bit a four bit pot compared to your opponent who has studied a slightly different 4-bit pot and doesn't really, the, the intuition doesn't really um, apply to, to the spot that you're actually playing. So Doc Adams, get what you're saying, so you you mean even if you don't know the strat for all the nodes, the player has to defend versus those sizing is that greater EV predicament having to respond to it? Yeah, if you don't know how to respond, you don't know how to defend. You 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 you're at a disadvantage. And half of the game is defending, right? Half the game is playing defensively. Half the game is playing offensively. And so you have to know both. And also learning one helps with the other. So um, if you end up if you end up you know limiting limiting your own intuition in, in post-flop because you don't understand the preflop ranges and you haven't studied enough um, varying post-flop sizes then you, you're gonna you're gonna run into issues yeah and everything's gonna have slightly different stack-to-pot ratio uh, Dunskis in regard to having multiple open sizes in the same saying as a pyre bot with 15 post-flop sizes would destroy a pyre bot with three bet sizes uh, yeah, that, that tends to happen. That 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 that, that tends to happen, Dunskis. If you, if you if you if you have a bot, yeah, you can run the experiments yourself in in Pi or whatever, Pi or GTA Plus or whatever post-op solver you you fancy. Um, just try try having one of the players using fewer sizes and, and the other player having lots of sizes and see what the difference in in the range UV is going to be. The range UV is going to change dramatically. Um, all right, any other questions? All right, cool. It's going for about an hour and a half. I think it's plenty. Um, get the dynamic view if you haven't already. Get that. That gets you the GTO stuff. You can think about the Sim Crusher stuff, which is going to be coming out at the end of this month, beginning of next month. And then post op stuff, you get early access for. Right. And then if you're like really keen on particularly live or, or online, you're playing really high level, then you can uh, hit me up for the live cash elites or online cash elites. And then if you're playing in the World Series of Poker later this year, you can get the tournament proof of edge on pre sale. So I'm going to be running some tournament sims specifically for that. So hopefully that clears up some stuff. Remember to like the video or dislike the video. I don't really care whether you like it or dislike it. Good fella. Um, but, or yeah, just, just, just uh, also please, um, please also comment nasty things in the comment section because it's always fun to go over them in another video. All right, see you guys later.